皆さん、こんにちは。Thank you for inviting me to say a few words at Kobe Career Forum. I wish I could make it to participate in person, but our parliament keeps me from visiting Japan because we're in budget defense session. However, I try my best here to e-meet you in this pre-recorded video. I've been invited to participate、uh, in remote and in-person events for many times in Japan. I'm always so impressed that Japanese governmental agencies, including ministerial and metropolitan governments, the social groups, the public sector, were all so eagerly to work together to promote digitalization in public service, in commercial businesses, and education. With such a strong mindset, you do not have to be modest. I firmly believe Japan will continue to lead the world as one of the most advanced countries in terms of high technology. So good luck with time, everyone. I'm Audrey Tang, Taiwan's Digital Minister. It's a pleasure to share our Taiwan model with you all. Between the lifting of the martial law in 1987, In our country's first direct presidential election in 1996, we saw the popularization of PC and the web in a span of 10 years. The internet here has developed alongside our democratization, and people are accustomed to use the internet as a democratic forum for public discussion. An image from the just-finished Taiwan Pride Parade depicting an anti-LGBTQ person with a sign and two men kissing together behind him received a lot of attention online. Some believe this exemplifies the values coexisting in our society, while others believe this is an example on how violence can be resisted through love. These discussions are a solid indicator of the significance of our digital public infrastructure. The government maintains that broadband is a human right, and through such infrastructure investment, we are reducing the cost for civic technologists. Our infrastructure allow everyone to broadcast live from Jade Mountain, our highest peak. It preserves freedom, human right, openness of expression, allowing for ongoing discussion and deliberation of various values. Now, for the people of Taiwan, democracy is therefore a social technology that can be enriched through the efforts of all. Goes without saying that democracy here is not just for the people, but with the people. The crucial point is that the government must trust citizens to participate in policy making, to form common goals, to develop innovative solutions, and contribute to our planet. Scattered public opinion can be transformed into a continuous cycle of people-public-private partnerships. From the launch of our ministry in the Moda in August, we outline our vision of plurality on such partnerships, collaborative. Diversity, just like the internet, from diverse network topologies, communities of all shapes and sizes can set up unique spaces and initiate action agendas together. Across different time and space constraints, these solutions can surface and surface those unlikely good enough consensus across different ideologies. And the freedom of co-creation, stemming from the emerging technologies such as Web3. Are often, of course, the focus nowadays to debate, but the most important thing is to start with the people. Through appropriate technology and tools, we can communicate smoothly, identify common problems, recontextualize through community notes and fact-checking, and then satisfy the societal needs through technology. Ten years ago, our cabinet in Taiwan resolved to promote open government data at all levels. And we discover that people want to solve those challenging public issues together, promoting the effective and efficient use of data. With more than 57,000 datasets at data.gov.tw, we make available high-value data popularly demanded on air quality, land price registration, real estate transactions,、uh, product trading quotes, electricity supply, and so on. And through this cross-sectoral collaboration, we facilitated many cases of data activation. For example, learning from the Japanese Mai Mitsu, the Taiwan Water Review Map app offers data on the free drinking filling locations, and it includes the governmental sector, the、uh, drink dispensers, but also、uh, decreased water usage by the participation by the street vendors. Now. 
Of course, the community established last platform also monitors air quality and water quality together. And again, we collaborate with them with the CIVO IoT project. This year, our Central Weather Bureau threw its weight behind the initiative by announcing the innovative application project on weather open data. Citizens and enterprises can apply for high accuracy data and resources. It utilizes such data and resources, allowing everyone to harness the unbridled potential of creativity and technology in promoting cross-disciplinary applications, for example, using micro-weather prediction for disaster mitigation, offshore wind power, agriculture, tourism, transportation, and finance. In the MODA, we are working with all agencies, all ministries to propose the main categories of high-value datasets. We will publish the themes after collecting the opinions of our national consultation platform, the JOIN platform. In December, the theme are to be released as part of the efforts to keep the development of good governance and digital economic development moving forward at the rate of knots along with our societal resilience. In recent years, the tech for good approach of using data and co-creation to solve social problems such as the pandemic has taken hold in Europe and the US. For Taiwan, there is a groundswell of support among ministries for the hackathon concept as a way to solicit ideas from the social and private sectors and tackling the public issues together, exchanging experiences and open the use of data. The highest level hackathon, the presidential hackathon in Taiwan, has been held annually for five years now. It is really a milestone in public innovation. It's open to citizens, governmental departments, civic hackers, involving creating, implementing the local innovative solutions and then scaling it countrywide. For example, last year, a junior high school student proposed the Course API project to connect the open courseware, OCW, and many coursewares together. This made to the top 20 out of quadratic voting uh, from hundreds of proposals. And this reinvigorated people's intrinsic passion for education and knowledge. This innovative can-do spirit of the students is an inspiring example of how the younger generations are increasingly employing digital technology to bring about positive change and build solidarity across generations. Now, in addition to the domestic track, we also have an international track. For the past couple of years, we've been focusing on climate action, practicing net zero. One of the teams this year, uh, the Erling Township, and Zhongzhou University of Science and Technology in central Taiwan's Zhanghua County established the biochar pyrolysis production equipment recycling system. So it's operated through a cloud data match platform to make the most responsible use of the biochar recycling model for agricultural waste reduction while promoting the carbon rise and reducing the emission footprint. Another outfit from India, the Tim Benz, the solution analyzes soil and weather conditions through data, reducing the labor cost and recommends the suitable landscapes and the kind of trees to plant to make those plants sustainable and make urban forests. Along with these very good ideas that scales throughout the world, we also took the part of ideation from the presidential hackathon and run its separate uh, activity, the Ideathon. The ideas on departs from previous outcome-based ideas is a powerful activity for people from all walks of life to share a smorgasbord of entries and fresh thousands of approaches of what is possible in 2040. So this year's ideas on the theme is We We Futures 2040 Plurality. The personal engagement and participation allows all corners, especially the very young generation, to better understand the expectation and vision to free the future in 2040. The Future News individual competition, the events and reports that takes digital for all, what could happen in 2040, the text the multimedia are created, and the prototype team uh, takes these ideas and make design concepts for 2040. And it will be driven by cross-disciplinary specialists. The top ideas are facilitated into immersive experiences so our researchers and technologists can immerse ourselves 
in these positive futures and guide and to steer our development. And we also built a innovation communication technology application infrastructure program we launched this month, which invites the people to brainstorm on developing technology with high social and output value that drives from those ideas on best ideas that take care of the SDGs. So any of the sustainable development goals, target or indicator fulfilling idea can receive immediate support. The goal of the program is to collectively create societal value of around US 320 billion with a special emphasis on the social return of investment or SROI. The common good, the public welfare innovations and so on can uh, raise through this quadratic funding mechanism um, because in presidential hackathon, we use quadratic voting, but these ideas already warrant public investments. We use crowdfunding mechanisms to make sure that people can surface the ones that take care of most of people's needs through quadratic funding. One example, the video relay services for real-time matchmaking between sign language interpreters and people with hearing or speaking difficulties. The social welfare can be calculated and put a dollar value on it, Although the business model, the business scale may not be large at the moment, it will actually fulfill a lot of the existing KPIs, existing objectives that are already part of the Ministry of Health and Welfare. And so these guidance from existing ministries and the project funding uh, investors from the impact investment people can put together and accelerate the development of such good um, for all ideas that stems from this um, SDGs and ESG communities. So quadratic funding, which takes the sum of the square root of each individual donor, is a mathematically um, deliberative way to show the importance of an idea, not just voting through grant committees or just crowdfunding where one single wealthy person can overwhelm a lot of people. Uh, they take these two together. And so I firmly believe this is also a milestone of public innovation in the world because quadratic funding not only verifies public support, it also ensures the proposal for fundraising meets a broad swath of societal needs, truthfully reflecting on which communication charity proposals gains public support. So the presidential hackathon, the ideas on, and the public quadratic funding together becomes a new ecosystem for sustainable innovation. And so we firmly believe that these data uh, models, when different teams work together, need to completely preserve the privacy and also the cybersecurity of all. So in addition of investing in the SROI assessment and so on, we're also investing in the privacy enhancing technologies, including homomorphic encryption, federated learning, secure multi-party computation, and so on. So those ideas can proceed at full speed without worrying about privacy concerns. The top ideas will receive a lot of awards. For example, the best idea will receive 5 million NT dollars. And we sincerely believe that this will promote a new grassroots generation of champions of data altruism. So the data of individual or organizational donors, as I mentioned, can be processed using PETs into non-personal data with consent for the public good, with no risk for the relevant parties. This facilitation of data sharing with trust should take place in an easy and simple way. This is also, of course, the essence of the European Union's Data Governance Act. Data altruism emphasizes the beneficial purpose of data for research or improving public services. So it's not just governmental open data, but also the private sector, the civic sector contributing into the common cross-sectoral data altruism initiatives. And this is how we trust the citizens and build digital mutual trust relationships. So this is like a admission ticket. Anyone can freely participate and openly provide data processed to be non-personal and entering in inclusive co-creation space 
to bring about real and lasting change. And in such a way, true mutual connections, not just within Taiwan, but between Taiwan and the countries signing on the uh, Declaration for the Future of the Internet, the DFIs, are made. And a new type of international coalition of digital mutual benefit could emerge. In April, I signed the Declaration, the DFI, with more than 60 partners from around the globe. In the Declaration, where all democracies with similar ideas, we pledge to promote not just the openness and interoperability, but the plural and inclusive spirit of the Internet. The multi-stakeholder governance approach should be used to shape the Internet into a resilient structure while strengthening mutual trust and protecting the freedom and human rights. Simply put, that declaration emphasizes the multi-stakeholder connection of the network of networks. The distributed internet structure is decentralized yet interdependent. It demonstrated the best strategy for digitalization is not about top-down, takedown, shutdowns, lockdowns, but rather a democratic network to build value-based innovations. In our ministry, there's no department for international cooperation, but a department for democracy network. So the network is, of course, between governments, but also non-governmental organizations, civic tech groups, Web3, decentralized, autonomous organizations, and so on. And we use, for example, the IPFS, the interplanetary file system, at our website, MODA, the GOV, the TW. Anyone in the world supporting our democratic value can pin our website on IPFS, offering connectivity and uh, your hard disk uh, spare um, room to keep our website afloat. So the IPFS being tamper-proof and censorship resistant is basically our weapon against any attempted lockdown takeover by authoritarian expansionism toward the internet. We're helping all journalists all freedom-loving people, and they are helping us by using the IPFS. And all other governmental agencies are then able to make use of our architecture because we relinquish the copyright into the commons as CC0. This saves money on design and development while quickly strengthening resilience worldwide. Starting with the MODA and the Creative Commons Zero public domain dedication, we are committed to encourage the uptake among all levels of governments, businesses, and the public. By waiving the copyright, not just domestically, but internationally, we're also looking to form alliances with other municipal or national governments across the world to build the public code coalitions together. Now, <clears throat> the cybersecurity infrastructure received a lot of attention. So many uh, foreign governments uh, tell us that they also want to join together on our zero trust architecture that allows me to sign the official records on a tablet to continue working anywhere in the world despite physical restrictions by verifying the SIM card, the connection, the software configuration, and also my fingerprints only on the device. We make sure that the cybersecurity um, attacks must go through all three different perimeters at the same time. Uh, otherwise, it will be detected and the forensics attribution shared with the world. So we're willing and able to assume the role of MODA as a motor of source, powering the connection between cybersecurity innovations, between privacy-enhancing technologies, and everyone to foster open mindsets, building resilience and co-creation. When the author of Neuromancer, William Gibson, first understood what virtual reality could bring about decades ago. He said, the future is already here, just not evenly distributed. At that time, the VR was very immature. But in 2015, William experienced full-fledged virtual reality and said, they did it. The novelist who predicted the shape of the cyberspace since before the internet was ubiquitous saw his vision come true. So the future is the constant state of flux, and so is Taiwan. For four million years, our islands of resilience raced toward the stars by, you know, the Eurasian plate and the Philippine sea plate bumping into each other. 
So we need to be resilient against the natural challenges and threats and some human-made ones. But with imagination and creativity, all and sundry can shape the contours of tomorrow, today. And this is the Taiwan model we wish to share with a world of collaboration across diversity. And friends, thank you for listening. I wish you the most successful experience and live long and prosper.